Hi, this is The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi, founder of The Complete Herbal Guide. Today, I'm very excited because we have an amazing guest on our show today. This is Ursula Menchus, and she is in business and she helps people grow their business and and even scale their business what she believes in she believes in building a business holistically where you can grow your business to seven figures but you could work less and you don't have to burn yourself out and she's going to tell us a little about herself and how she came about this method of helping people gain seven figures but be able to work less and not have to burn themselves out so ursula why don't you tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do I will. Thank you, Stacey, for having me here. I'm so excited to be connecting with you and everything that you bring to the world and all of your listeners. And yeah, so my background, I grew up on a farm in Southern Minnesota. I'm back in Minnesota, but I was in California for a long time. We, we ended up moving back. But growing up on a farm, Stacey, I learned one thing, and that was how to work really hard. And right. so when I left the farm, I had a lot of limiting beliefs about money, about success, and what was possible. And fast forward, I graduated from college. I moved to Boulder, Colorado with one of my best friends. We move in with her aunt and uncle, and they had just sold their company to IBM for $10 million. And I'll tell you, Stacey, I'd never met an entrepreneur. I didn't know anything about really what that world looked like or what that meant. And I had a lot of like beliefs about people with money. And I'll tell you, this family shattered those beliefs. They were the most generous, incredible people I'd ever met. And Jana's uncle, Will, sat me down one day and he said, you know, he said, Ursula, what are your plans? Which was code for you and Jana can't live here forever, right? <laughs> for a while in our multi-million dollar home in the foothills of Boulder, but not forever. So what are your plans? And I said, well, I think I want to go to law school because that was my plan at the time. I just knew I wanted something. I wanted my own thing. Yeah. And he looked at me and he, he didn't even skip a beat. He said, you know, Carol and I would be happy to pay for that for you. Wow. And Stacey, there was, there was nothing in this Lutheran farm kid from Southern Minnesota that could accept a gift like that. We are taught to say no, thank you 10 times before we even accept a cup of coffee. So I was like, no, thank you. I thank you. And he said, okay, I respect that. May I offer you some advice? And this was that moment, you know, those defining moments in your life where you're like, I can go this yes. way, I can go that way. And I said, please give me some advice. And he said, get a job in outside sales and you can do anything. You could have your own company someday. You could pay for law school. You could write your own ticket. I didn't even know what that meant, you know, loss or um, outside sales. I had no idea. I was in retail sales. So he said, you know, update your resume, send it to me. Before I could even do that, I'm working at Pure One Imports one day. Uh, I, you know, updated my resume, hadn't sent it to Will yet. And this woman came through wearing a really nice business suit. We started chatting. She worked for an international computer training consulting company. And she's like, what are you doing here? And I said, well, I'm working here for a while. I'm actually looking for a job in outside sales. I had no idea what that meant. I just knew to say it out loud, right? When you know yeah. your goal, you got to say it out loud. So I said, out right. loud. She said, she's like, well, we're hiring. Do you want to interview? Of course I said, yes. Now I could have disqualified myself, right? It was like, right. yes, I want to interview. I still don't know why they hired me. I, I think it was because I said I grew up on a farm and they thought I would work really hard and they were, <laughs> they were not wrong about that. Mm -hmm. and so I started in outside sales and I hated Everything about it, Stacey, I hated selling to, to the core, which put me on this journey. I read every book I could on sales and selling. And eventually in, in nine months, I went from being an outside sales rep to being promoted to run a branch. This was when I was 22 years old. By the time I was 24, I was transferred to California. That's how I got to California. I was running um, a multi um, six figure training business out there, grew that one. We actually increased sales um, from 300,000 a month to 3 million a month in, in sales. And by the time I was 27, they named me president of a $20 million company. Now I share this with you, not to say, look what I did. I share this with right. you because if a farm kid can learn how to sell, anybody can. Right. And in business, we all know if you don't know how to sell, you cannot grow. You can't grow your business. Right. So eventually we sold that company and I went on my own and I've been doing this ever since. So I'm super passionate about helping business owners not only learn how to sell, but once they learn how to sell, how to scale their business to seven figures, yeah. not with stress. Right. I think that's so important because, you know, so many people that I know, cause I'm, you know, I'm my whole life, I've been, you know, surrounded by business owners and, 
you know, I don't see that when I, when I see business owners, a lot of business owners that I know, they work harder and harder and they think in order to make the six or seven figure mark, they have to put more time and more energy and they don't know how to work less. You know, how does a person, you know, make a six or seven figure income and work less because every business owner that I know, you know, puts more time, more energy. You can see the stress and, and the withdrawal on their face because it's sucking everything out of them. So how does a person work less and make more? Yeah. It's truly by understanding the, the building blocks of the business, right? That being finance, team, leadership, operations, fulfillment, marketing, and sales. And looking at each one of those and asking what, what part of any of those should I be doing, if anything, and what part do I need to be delegating? Yeah. And then who needs to be, who needs to be in those seats? One of my favorite books of 2020 of the pandemic was um, Who Not How by Dan Sullivan. I don't know if you've read that book, but it's, no, I haven't. It's a genius book because it's all about, you know, when you, when you know what your goal is, our first question is always how, how do I get there? And he really teaches it should be who, who can get me there. And yes. so when we work with our clients and in my own business, we figure out how to scale by finding the who's that need to be in the seat. And that could mean a team member, right? That could mean someone directly on your team. It could right. be a specific marketing agency. That's the who that's going to help me grow my company. Like right. for you, like you've published a lot of books. It's like, who's the right publisher? It's finding the that right piece. And and also understanding what's the genius work that I should be doing. And I think that's different for every business owner, right? Like yeah. there are certain things that I love to do in my business that I would never give up because they, they feed me. Like I still do a little bit of coaching in my business. I still lead the marketing, right? Those are key pieces of what things I'd love to do. Yeah. But for another business owner, it might be that, um, you know, maybe they only want to be in the leadership role. They don't want to touch any of those other pieces, but you cannot scale to the next level by yourself. Now, I also want to say this. A lot of people think when I say that, it's like, oh my gosh, I have to hire this huge team of W2 employees. No, right. that's not what I'm saying. In fact, we have clients who, I can think of one client now, she's got a $3 million company and she has two part-time people that support her mm -hmm. and amazing processes and systems that she's put in place that allow her to work from 10 to two every day. She's a mom. She only wants to work from 10 to two so she can do the drop-off and the pickup, right? Which allows right. for parents. And she works from 10 to two, has a very small team, does multi-millions every year. That's what happens when, when you can scale with ease. It's about having the right people on your team, having the right systems and processes in place. Right. And I think, you know, that, that make you made such a good point is just having the right people on your team and delegating the right, you know, the, the right, you know, responsibilities to those people. And that gives you the freedom to actually withdraw a little and actually do the things that you need to do for yourself. You know, that makes a lot of sense. You know, I think a lot of people, they think I see this in a lot of business owners is that, you know, if I'm not there, it's not going to get right. It's not going to get done right. You know, I have to be there. I have to be there. And they think they have to be there from opening to closing because it's not going to get done right if they're not there delegating, you know, the responsibilities and making sure everybody's doing what they have to do. You know, what do you think about that? Yeah, it's a great point. I think the question, to, the question to ask yourself is, is it possible that there's somebody out there who could do it better than me? And the answer is always yes, because we live in a, we live in an unlimited universe, right? There's a million, billion, 8 billion people on the planet. I guarantee there's somebody out there, but that, that is the belief, right? And we, you know, I can think of one of our clients right now has grown to 700,000 alone without anyone supporting them. And frankly, they, they need to hire and they know that. And they finally, like they finally hired someone for eight hours a week. And now they're going to hire another person for about 20 hours a week. And it was painful because the belief was just like you said, if I'm not doing it, it's not going to get done or it's not going to get done. Right. And the opposite can actually be true that they can actually do it better than us. Right. right. When you hire the right people, you want people who are better than you in those areas. And that's when it gets fun. Yeah. And I think, you know, uh, one of the topics that we talked about before um, we uh, w went on the show is scaling. And a lot of times I find a lot of people, you know, don't really set value to what they're worth. They 
underprice their services or they underprice the products they sell because they don't think it, it it's they're worth it. But on in all honestly, it's they're probably worth five, 10, 15 times more than what they're doing. So instead of you know working less, they're working more because they're they're practically giving away a lot of the things that they do for nothing. And I think I read a book from Alex Homozi and he he talked about how the more you charge, the more people want it because they think it's better quality or better service. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I think perception matters definitely. And we find that most of our clients, when we meet them, typically need to double the prices of their products and services, period, end of story. Some need to 10X their pricing because they're so low. Yeah. And, and pricing is a sensitive thing. I find, you know, unfortunately us ladies, women, like we definitely undercharge and we don't value what we do. And and that does cause a disconnect in the business. It's tough to scale a business when you're not charging enough, right? You're just yeah. never, you're never going to get to that next level. So here's right. a pricing tip, because I feel like this is like, people get like, I don't know how, how do I raise my prices or so I get asked that all the time. Here's what you want to do. So take a, per, like a specific service, for example, that you offer. Okay. Mm -hmm. And think about the problem that it solves for your client, the need that it meets, Think about all the benefits that they get from it. Just think about all the results. Go back and read all the testimonials of happy people. Just think how amazing it is, right? Yeah. And then ask yourself, ask yourself, what is truly the least amount I would charge for this? Which is probably what you're charging right now. Mm -hmm. And then what is the most? Like if I could charge as much as I want to, knowing that, especially with a service, knowing that when I charge that much, I'm going to show up like the rock star that I am. I'm going to give so much to my clients. I'm going to be so excited. I'm going to bring so much joy and so much fun to this. It's going to be amazing. Like that level, what's yeah. the most I would charge? And everybody has a number. They know the number. Right. And then in the middle is probably where you are right now. Like it's hard for a lot of people to jump to that highest number, but you can probably find a number in the middle that you're like, it's a stretch, but I know I can sell it at that level and then yeah. move to that level. And then that becomes your bottom and then do it again in a few months. And then you just keep incrementally raising your prices. So kind of like a building block thing where, you know, you kind of, you raise it up a little bit and then, you know, you see, you kind of see what's working, what's not working. And then you kind of wait a few months and then you try to build it up more and build it up more. Yeah. And some people, most of our clients find that to your other point in Alex's book that they start to smell, they start to sell more immediately. It's almost like this immediate thing. And they're like, you're never going to believe this. Mm -hmm. And it's because here's the thing. Not only do people perceive that it's more valuable, people value it more when they invest more. Right. And in the world of coaching and like soft skill services like that, the more they're invested, the more likely it is they're going to show up and do the work. And, and right. that's why they're going to get a better return on their investment. I, I agree a hundred percent with you. And when people, you know, they're starting off and they're building their business, you know, it, it takes a while, you know, to, to build their business up. And when you get to that point, like you said, when, when you get to that point where you're starting to thrive, but you know, by the time the employee you're paying the employees, you're paying for this, you're paying for that and you're making all this money. But then when you take out all the expenses, you're hardly making anything or you're making adequate, but not what you should. Is that a time when people should start thinking about, well, maybe I should be scaling my prices. Maybe I should be doing more, you know, what do you suggest when, when that happens to a yeah. client? Absolutely. It's a great question. So I will say the, the hardest six figures you'll make is the first six figures, like a hundred thousand dollar business, a hundred thousand annual revenue. It was just tough to run. It's like you doing all the things it's like, ugh, it's painful. You got to get to like 250 for most businesses to be profitable enough for you to feel like you don't have a job that you hate. Right. And yeah. so, so if you notice, like you're feeling frustrated, like there's this turn and burn happening either, probably you're not charging enough, but you're also not selling enough. Right. Right. And it's time to expand that revenue goal, whatever that is. The thing to remember is that if you want a half a million, but you haven't created a projection or a revenue model for a half a million, I guarantee you it's not going to show up. It doesn't, we never get more than we ask for. We can get less sometimes, but if you're not even asking for it, it can't show up. Right. So a lot of our clients start with like, you know, in a 2X scenario, for example, if they want to go from 250 to half a million a year, the first step is to create that revenue model and really, um, really get clear on what, what the revenue needs to be, what your costs need to be and what your net profit is. Get a clear picture of, of your financial strategy, right? Your plan. Yeah. Once you have that, you can expand it even more. So some of them they'll build a half a million and then they'll be like, I actually think I could do 750. Well, it's like expand it because you're not going to be mad if you hit 600,000, right? right. Even 
that a 750 because originally you were thinking 500. But again, it's not going to show up. We say this over and over again. It's not that revenue will not show up if you don't create the space for it. Right. Right. So what would you suggest first is to, to actually plan everything out. Like you said, make that platform, make that, you know, and then what would be step number two for the person? Yeah. So create the revenue model with our clients. We typically start with a model month template. Like that's just easier for people to wrap their heads around. Yeah. If you could have your ideal month, what would that be? Maybe you're at 20,000 a month. You want to be at 40,000 a month. Okay, great. So we break down the numbers so you can see how many widgets I need to sell or how many services I need to sell to get there. When you do that exercise, uh, you will also quickly notice if you need to raise your prices, like it's right away that starts to come up. And so you start to see, oh, if we raised our prices in this area, we actually would need less services or you know widgets sold. Once you have your model month nailed, then expand it, then take your model month and plug it into a 12 month revenue model. So you can see what it would look like. And very quickly, right. you get to see, you know, how much you, you know, what you're going to be selling, what, what it's going to look like, what your net profit is. And then we also get to remember that a business, a corporation gives us a lot of tax benefits. So even though like my net profit might not be as high as I want, Maybe I purchased, maybe my vehicle is purchased through the business or, you know, my health insurance. Like there's a lot of benefits that are inside the business that we have to remember are also, like we're also paying for those things that are coming to us. Right, right, exactly. You know, it's it, people, you know, I think in, in this day and age, you know, especially with a recession, it, it really hurts people a lot and it makes things even harder. So when people are struggling financially, you see so many cutbacks now, you see businesses, you know, closing down stores, you know, how does someone stay on top when, when the economy is falling? Yeah, it's a great question. So here's the first part for any business owner that survived the pandemic, you can make it through the recession or whatever this is, right? What's interesting yeah. Like if you look at, uh, there's the uh, there's actually a lot of people that, a lot of businesses that are thriving right now. And we don't realize that, or we don't hear those stories. We only hear right. about the ones who are laying off. A lot of big companies are laying off. That's kind of a bell ringer. It's like, okay, yeah, maybe we are in a recession, but the jobless claims aren't super high right now, right? We, we still have right. a ton of people working in this country. In fact, I can tell you like, at least in Minnesota, probably other areas, right? There's, there's help wanted everywhere. There's lots of opportunities, maybe jobs that we don't want, but for right. someone who does want a job, like there's so much, there's so much opportunity out there. So the first thing is to filter what we're hearing mm -hmm. because the media is paid to sell stories. So they have to be exactly. sensational, right? The, the sky is falling. The world has ended. That's how I feel like <laughs> anything on the news these days, especially coming out of the pandemic, right? It's yeah. World War three, it's over. And so you got to, filter that. And I, I would be very careful about what you take in, right. What you are reading, because it, you know, it may or may not be sensationalized or when you go in and read it, you look at the title and you think, Oh, like the world is ending, but then you go read it. And it's like, well, that maybe the world could end just like a recession is happening. Well, has anyone said a recession is actually happening right now? There's been all right. this talk about it for like a year, like yeah. really recession. But then I look at the jobs reports. I look at other things and I think, but are we, we have inflation, but are we in recession? So I go back to 2009 because I know we're going to have another recession. It's just part of the cycle of business. Right. And back in 2009, I remember that businesses, a lot of businesses that I knew said one of two things that either they were going to make this the best time in business or they weren't. And those who said this was going to be a tough time in business, it was right for many people. It was And yeah. those who like double down, like they double down on their marketing. They double down on taking care of their clients. They, even in the construction industry in 2009 in California, people were, you know, finding new opportunities, right? Those who are savvy, right. And not getting picked up by fear. And I think business owners, we're just scrappy by nature. Cause this is what we do, right. We got to figure it out all the time. If you're willing to figure it out, this could be your best year ever in business. That's what we're telling our clients. Like our clients had their best year ever in the pandemic. The first year of the pandemic, when a lot of businesses went under, we, yeah. said, to our clients, we said, you're going to double down and you're going to decide that this is your best year in business. So, so much of it, Stacey, as you know, happens up here. Yeah. And, and so for anyone who's like feeling some fear around the recession, I would say challenge yourself, right? You know, what would it take for this to be your best year of business, regardless of what's happening around you? Right. 
uh, you know, um, do you think it's good to have maybe a coach or to write things in a journal? Like, what do you think is most effective for people if people aren't really sure where to start? Like they, you know, they have an idea or maybe, maybe they had a good point, but they want to get better. Like how, how would you suggest to these people? What's the best way to, to start on your journey to success? Yeah, it's such a great question. So hanging out here, hanging out with you, right? Hanging out and listening. I love podcasts. Like we have so much access to information and inspiration and motivation. Now it's unbelievable. Never in the history of the world that we have this much access. So listen to those podcasts like Stacey, those podcasters who inspire you and stay plugged. That's what you want to be listening to. Not the garbage that's on some of these other places that are being paid for whatever. Right. Right. Read books. You mentioned, you know, a book that you read. I mentioned a book that I read. You and I probably read a lot. Um, (laughs) Stay in the books. If you don't like reading, listen to the books, right? right. Stay in that energy. Of course, hire a coach, right? Of course, you know, you and I believe in coaching. I'm sure you yeah. have multiple, I have multiple coaches that I work with. Right. I would not have been able to grow the business the way that we did during the pandemic without the coaches that I work with who right. support me regularly. So get a coach, get into a community, get into a community of people that are like-minded who believe what you do because community, I feel like, especially in the world we're in now is more important than ever. And being with people who are going to pull you forward versus like, um, allow you to stay stuck. Right now, when it comes to like advertising, you know, sometimes people pour in so much money into advertising is advertising worth it. And if it is what type of advertising really helps a corporation or a company expand their business because sometimes people focus on the wrong type of advertising you have social media you have you know magazines you, there's we can go on and on and on and on and on but where you know is it most effective you know, you know so people don't just waste their money in the wrong places yeah i've wasted my money in a lot of the wrong places so <laughs> it's like uh i think it's a journey right see so because the, yeah. the tricky part is that something that worked in 2020 might not be working now. Yes. And the leaders of our businesses, we have to be at the front of, of watching what's working and not working. When I built my business originally, and I say this to all my clients, like I, we built our business to the first half million a year with no paid advertising, zero. We did very traditional things. We did, we networked. I did a lot of stage speaking. Doesn't cost me anything. In fact, I got paid to do it, right? Right. I was on podcasts. I launched our podcast, not super costly, like and being a guest is free, right? That's a huge opportunity, like what we're going to do, like what we're doing right now. Yeah. Um, and so so look for those those ways that you can be marketing that don't cost you a lot of money because they're they're everywhere, especially if you're new in business. Yeah. Hey, I don't think paid advertising is useful until you have nailed your pricing, your packages, your brand. And like, you are sure that if you put $1 in, you're going to get $2 out. Right. And this comes from somebody who has spent a lot of money on marketing. Now I will say (laughs) at this stage in my business, I do spend a lot of money. Like I work with a marketing agency. We have paid ads now. And if you're listening to this and you Google me, right, then um, my ads are probably going to show up in your feed somewhere. That's how, that's the world we're in today. Yeah. But that was a very thoughtful, thought out financial decision that I made after a lot of research and after a lot of other, you know, hiring other companies that just weren't a good fit for us. Right. Like I, you know, a lot of books that I've read, you know, they, every moment is, you know, like every moment is, is a dollar every moment, you know, if you're not going to, if you're not going to, like you said, if you're not going to get back what you put into it, you know, don't even bother, you know, and they, you know, a lot of times people focus on YouTube or they focus on Instagram. Are you making money off of that? You know, like you have to think about like, you know, where are you making money? Where are you not making money? Cause if you're not really making money, then why are you wasting your time in that area? What do you think? Yeah. So I, you know, I agree with you. It's like, especially if you're going to hire, come, if you're paying for marketing, you have to ask, what is the return of my investment? You have to, and if, if the person that's selling you the marketing cannot answer that question, move on. Right. They cannot like the company I'm working, one of the companies I'm working with now, like they, they literally can show me the data of like, when you put X amount in, this is what's going to come out. This is when you got, this is when you get into profit. I mean, it's so scientific and so data-driven. Yeah. I love that. If someone can't answer that for you, they're probably not the right company for you. Right. So, so yeah, it's, um, I will say though, I will say there's things though, that I, that take time. Mm-hmm. Like if you're doing a podcast, you got to do the podcast and you got to be consistent and it's right. work and you got to keep putting it out there and you don't get to quit the podcast. I mean, some people do, and maybe they still get leads from that, but 
but it ultimately, Stacey, as you know, it all works together, right? Yeah. So the podcast that we promote on social media is tied to this, which is tied to the advertising, which, you know, it all has to play together nicely. Right. But again, like there are things that to your point that we've quit doing because like there's certain events that I've spoken at in the past that maybe were, were great, but we no longer, it's just no longer a fit or it's no longer our target client. So you got to be yes. discerning about where you spend your time. Exactly. I agree a hundred percent. Now, when you look at, you know, helping companies grow, like, do you, does it take time? You know, we, I find that our society is a very impatient society. People want results one, two, three, and it doesn't always happen like that. You know, a lot of times, most of the time, it doesn't always happen like that. When people are trying to grow their business, can they make a return very quickly? Or do you see most of the time it's a slow process that takes time, but eventually you'll see the golden nugget at the end of the road? Yeah. So it depends because we have some clients who time, timing matters, right? Who were so, so ready to work with a coach and they done, they had done a lot of work in the background. So when we yeah. were able to support them, it was like, it was like turning the faucet on. We made a couple of changes and all of a sudden there's revenue was just pouring in Yeah, or they hired for the first time. And all of a sudden the company started to explode. A lot of companies though, like I, I believe, and this is what we, we work with clients who want to have a two X and that could be, I want to go from 10,000 to 20,000. Right. I truly believe, especially in a service-based business product can take a little bit longer that you can turn that business in 90 days or less. Like you could by the end of 90 days have doubled your revenue some sooner than that. I yeah. definitely think that's, that's really possible because once you're up and running, like once someone's at 10,000 a month, pretty consistently, something's working. And right. so then it's looking at what's working and what could we double down on so that their revenue can 2X. So right. it, it depends. I don't like, but we never want to overpromise, right? Like it's, it could depend on a lot of things. We've had some clients who have taken longer because they needed to fire a lot of clients and that took time. Like they yeah. were working with clients who just sucked the life out of them. And just <laughs> handling that was such a, like such a process for them to like have the courage to just start releasing clients who were no longer a fit. So then they could create room for new clients. So that was probably more of a six month path. Right. But they also knew that like the client knew that was going to take a little longer. Right. You know, cause people have to realize too, sometimes you have those clients that you're never, you're never going to get a positive outcome from, you know, they do suck the life out of you and, you know, and they're the ones who make you work the hardest are the ones with that pay, pay the least I find, you know, and those are the ones that people have to realize, you know, are you, are you really getting your money's worth by working with that client? Don't you think? Cause some clients, they, the ones that pay the least, they, they're they usually the ones that suck the most energy out of you and you're making the least amount of profit. Do you find that in your world? Yeah. Yes. And we've made, we've, you know, made really, um, a concerted effort to get really clear in our top 20% because part of it, let's, we were with our clients. It's like, who, who is your top 20%? Who should you only be working with Right. So that you don't say yes to clients who aren't a fit and get into that painful situation. But I find they did like, that's a learning process. You know, when we first launch our businesses, it's like, we'll take anybody. It's like, I just need to pay the bills. Right. And then right. slowly you start to move out of that and you realize, oh my gosh, like, I could only work with this kind of client or customer. And then you get to do that, but that, that can take a little bit of time. Right. Now, if you have to like give some advice to people, like, you know, people who want to grow their business or people who want to go into the six or seven figure, you know, and you know, what would be the best advice to, to tell people, you know, like some, some really good tips that might give them a good direction on what they need to do in, in order to enhance their business. Yeah. So first it goes back to what we talked about before. You've got to start with the end in mind. So what is, where, where do you really want to be? And I find like we kind of lie to ourselves about that. It's like, Oh, I guess I just want 250. No, you don't. You want your heart's desire is a half a million dollar business. So say right. it out loud. So work from your heart's desire, that goal that you most want, or it's like, it's kind of, a, it just takes forever. So create yeah. a stretch goal. Cause it can't show up if, if you don't create it, then revenue model it. We talked about this as well. You've got to get clear on your model month. And then revenue model it out for a year. Because when you do that, what happens next is the way to market starts to get really clear. Like when you break down that month and you're like, okay, if I'm going to get to from 10,000, 20,000 a month, I need, you know, um, I need 20 clients a month at a thousand dollars each. And that means that I'm just using easy math. I, yeah. my closing ratio is 50%. So I need to work with, we need to talk to 40 people a month to get there. Just easy math. I don't know what your numbers are. Anybody right. Know? But then you got to break it down. Well, once I know I need 40 appointments a month, for example, then the question is, 
well, what's the fastest and easiest way to get there? I love that question. Mm -hmm. And when you start to write down the ideas, what's the fastest and easiest way to get to, you know, 40 appointments a month, there's gold in that list. In fact, studies show if you can come up with 50 ideas to answer that question, you will find gold inside of that list that will actually get you there. In that example, you're going to find marketing, mostly marketing ideas, right? Mostly marketing ideas. Maybe it's, maybe it's referrals, maybe it's, um, affiliates, maybe, you know, partners that you're going to work with, you're going to refer business back and forth. Maybe it is advertising, maybe it's speaking on stages, or you look at like, what, how did we get to 10,000 a month? And then you double down what's worked on what's worked really well. In other words, building that expansive plan, the monthly plan, breaking it down, knowing your numbers starts to show you the path to get there. And that's where we start with all of our clients. And there's gold in that. Once you do that, you're going to, you're going to start to see the way that's waiting for you. That's excellent. Now your website, what is your website that people can get in touch with you? Yeah, um, it's Ursula Inc. So U-R-S-U-L-A-I-N-C.co. So dot company, not dot com. And what, what services do you provide? Or do you have any products also that you might provide like books or anything like that, that you provide to your people? Yeah, we have, um, there's five books on, on the website and they're also on Amazon. Sometimes that's just easier to grab them. Everything from Selling with Intention, which was my first book, um, to One Great Goal, Selling with Synchronicity, The Belief Zone. And my latest is Up Level Now that came out a couple of years ago. So those are the books. Mm-hmm. We also offer a signature course called the 2X Intensive for anyone who's ready to do that. And there's yeah. information on the site about that. But we do have a free gift on the homepage. You can't miss it, Stacy. It's the Quantum Revenue Expansion Masterclass. And it's free. It's a three-part series that helps you figure out what we talked about today. It helps you get clear on your numbers. Mm-hmm. It helps you figure out how to price um, your products or services. And then we dive into marketing, like what's it going to take to get there? And then the final um, part of the class is all about scaling. How do I collapse time to get to my goal even faster? So that's oh. a free gift from the website. That's awesome. So one more time, tell everybody your website so they, it sticks in their head. So yeah. you just go to UrsulaInc.co. And everything's right there on the homepage. You can see it. That's amazing. Well, you know what? Thank you so much for being on the show. You have provided so much great information. And, you know, do you provide coaching services for people? We do. Everyone starts with the 2X Intensive. Thanks for asking. And then, you know, for those who who want additional support and want to be in a community, they can go into our CEO table. And that's our our coaching community, which is awesome. And you can find all that on the website. Yes. All of it's on the website and you can contact us. If you have any questions, we'd love to answer those. Oh, that's great. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. You provided us with a wealth of information and I'm so glad that you, you know, came on the show and because, you know, people, you know, I think people lack confidence or they just don't know how to do it. You know, they have dreams, but they just don't know how to make their dreams a reality. And you just gave people such great information to kind of really give them one hope and to realize that, you know what, we have to break through our fear and we have to believe in ourselves. And if we, like you said, if you, you put a number in your head, and you kind of map it out clearly, you can get to that. Your dreams can become your reality if you do it right, if you have a goal and you stick by that. So that's that's amazing. Yeah, just take the next step that's in front of you. So Stacy, thanks for having me. It was a pleasure. Oh, you're very welcome. And thank you for being on the show.